going to tie Mercer's Micro Mayfly, and I'm starting off with a size 16 nymph hook in the vise, and I've already added a 332nd tungsten bead, along with a handful of wraps of my lead to give it some extra weight shape and to also seat that, that bead. The thread that I'm going to use is an 8 uh, and this is an olive dun. I'm going to tie everything in this green olive color family. And so I'll start my lead or start my wrap to thread just behind the lead and then wrap it up, trim the tag end. And now I'm going to bring this all the way down just beyond the bend in the hook. And I'm going to tie in just a slight thread bump. You can do this with dubbing if you'd like, but uh, it's a similar technique to uh, how I tie my goose bats into my prince nymphs and it keeps them separated. It'll do the same here with with this pattern. The tail that I'm going to use for this is a pheasant tail and it's dyed olive and I've taken off three fibers and I'll tie these in on the side and when I make my wraps I'm just going to bring them up and around and I'll tie them kind of over that bump as I go and you can see how that spreads those out and I'll just take some wraps back to secure the the butt sections and I'll trim the excess this pattern has a rib and I'm going to use a very fine copper wire for mine and so I'll remove maybe a three inch section and I'll tie that into the side and you'll notice I'm kind of smoothing out the body as I go here because I'm going to wrap in um, a peacock curl and this is a stripped peacock curl so when you start you've got your traditional peacock curl and then if you take a pencil eraser to it you can strip off all the material so you get this nice kind of quill to, to tie in. So I'm just going to tie this in uh, at the butt section so the section that's closest to the stem uh, it's a little bit wider and I think it provides a more uniform uniform segmentation. So now I'm just going to bring these wraps up just nice side by side and I'll over wrap just slightly when I get to my thread then I'll tie it off and I'll trim the excess and now for the rib I'm going to reverse wrap the rib so I get that cross section and so I'll just wind my rib up through and again I'll over wrap this as well so I'll bring it past my thread and I'll take a hard angle across so that I don't spiral off my rib and then I'll just helicopter it and break it clean so now the uh, wing casing for this is a two part process it's got um, some pearl tinsel to it so I'll take a piece of pearl tinsel, I'm going to set this right on top and tie it in. And then I'm going to come back to my pheasant tail and I'll take off maybe six fibers and I'm just going to cut 
make a straight cut here so that I can tie it in. And again, right on top, and I'll take it back to where I tied in my pearl tinsel. So now the uh, thorax for this is one of the most defining features, I think, to it. It's a nice ball-shaped thorax. So I'm going to use uh, an olive dubbing. This is uh, a darker olive. And I'll just start to dub in the thorax here. Kind of right on top of one another so that you create that that ball shape. And I'm not going to dub it real tight to real tight to my bead. I want to leave a gap there because there's some material that I want to tie in. And so now I can bring up kind of an errant fiber here. Now I can bring up my pheasant tail and so I'm just going to bring that straight up and over and make sure it covers the back and I'll do the same then with my pearl tinsel straight up and over make any adjustments and then two wraps on top I'll pull everything back and then take two wraps underneath and now I can trim this off when you do keep a hold of your pheasant tail fibers because you're going to use those tip sections for the legs so now I've got three for each side so I'll just remove those I'll hold them up against the side I'm not worried about length at this point, I just want to get them in. Take maybe two wraps and then pull them back to get them to the size that, or the length rather that I'm looking for. And I want to keep them uh, just a little bit beyond that thread ball or that, uh, that thorax. So now I'll take another group of legs. And I'll do the same thing to the other side. And again, not worried about length on this first wrap. Just want to get them in and placed and then draw them to the length that you're looking for. And when you're happy with that, I'll bring them up and over. And I can trim these off. And now I'll come back and just make sure my legs are, are positioned, that they didn't move on me. And the final step is just a little bit more dubbing and just a very fine amount to cover your threads. So just a small pinch there, maybe two wraps. I'm going to pull the rest of this off. And now I'll come back through and whip finish. And trim the thread. And the only other thing that I want to do now is put a little bit of drop of uh, Loon's hard head cement on this. And I like this. You can use an epoxy if you like. I like it because you know, it's a little bit thicker. You wouldn't want to use uh, traditional head cement or more liquid head cement because it would absorb too much. This will create that kind of nice bump on the back here. And it will settle some, so I usually take a little bit more than 
a little bit higher than what I what I want so that when it when it settles it'll be the right shape. And that is Mercer's Micro Mayfly.